Well, good day and welcome back. Well, I have a fun video for you today. I just recently received this book from our friend Brian Krauss. I actually ordered it myself, but Brian just recently published it. He is an educator, and the book is The Old School Typewriter Algebra Workbook. So Brian is a math teacher, and he has this Corona 4 that was custom ordered back in the day with mathematical symbols, and Brian created this algebra workbook using this type writer on the cover. And I thought it would be a fun thing to look at. It's very interesting when I think back in the early 1970s when I went to school in high school, some of my worksheets were created on typewriters by my teachers. And I think it's really fun to visit this as an idea. Yes, I don't have a Corona 4, but I do have the Corona Standard and we are rocking the candelabra, of course. So let's look at Brian's book. Stay tuned. Well, I really like the cover picture of Brian's typewriter, not only as uh, the art of it, but it gives me a reference as to what the actual keys are. So it's nice having this picture on the cover because I can uh, reference the actual symbols that the typewriter has, being how this is a custom math keyboard. So it has the typical two through nine digits on the top row of keys, but it does not have a zero digit. Instead, you have to use a shifted O. And then it has superscript numbers, smaller numbers, and of course where the number one key would be in a more modern typewriter is the underscore, I believe. And it has one through five in superscript numbers, and then it has some Greek symbols that are mathematical or science symbols. There's a slash here. And then uh, to the right of the P, you have percentage and the beginnings of the square root symbol. And we'll see later how Brian managed to create the full square root symbol with this. And then down here to the right of the L, we have a division symbol and the hyphen, which serves as a minus sign as well. And to the right of that is a plus and an equals. So having a plus and an equals was common with later typewriters, like let's say in the 1950s, but it wasn't as common back in the 1920s. And then down here, you also have the parentheses above the comma in period. There's an alpha symbol and pi. It has pi symbol, which is pretty cool. So yeah, a very interesting keyboard, and this is the reason why Brian was able to create this book with this typewriter. So what I really like about the layout of this book is as we open up the book to the first frontispiece page, the old school typewriter algebra workbook, it is typed with the same typewriter. In fact, all of the text in the book is typed. Here's the second page. Brian Krauss, even your Library of Congress kind of credits and all that is typed with the typewriter. The preface is typed with it. I really appreciate that. This is an interesting preface here. How to use the workbook for students and for teachers. And he has a links to a more further resources uh, in terms of algebra resources. And then he has a little page here about the typewriter itself. It's a 1930 Corona 4. He credits Bill Wall with helping him get the typewriter in good running shape. And then there's a table of contents, which really kind of fascinates me because this is the kind of table of contents I was used to seeing in typewritten material in school, spacing over in these regular columns and having the numbers with a dash and a subheading number and just everything about it is very classically typewriter oriented style of typography. And then he has a section here on expressions and equations, how to evaluate expressions, etc. And this is where we get into the meat of how he he's using the special mathematical typographic symbols on his typewriter. Well, I want to start here on this page 10, the section one expressions and equations, just to show you how Brian has worked out using the math symbols to create these expressions. So you'll notice this sentence, since the square root of nine equals three, we get, and then he has an expression here. What I really like about this is, so there is that square root symbol it's on the same line as the word since, and then he types the nine. And then he will back roll the platen, back roll the paper, one full line and type the underscore below the R of the previous line. 
to make the top part of the square root symbol. And then of course he adds a space between and after and before the equals sign to get a nice room there, typographical room. He does the same here also, you'll notice, uh, putting spaces between the numbers and symbols in the expression so it doesn't look crowded. And over here you might see, there is an example of the superscript, so five plus six, to the second power, so he's using those superscript symbols that are on the keys. And so this expression here, he's typed the whole expression on the same typing line as well as here, but this one, it looks like he has to go full line up to type the top part of the square root symbol. Which gets me to another point about Brian's typewriter, is that his typewriter has a half space typewriter in terms of vertical lines, a half line typewriter, I should say, meaning that it doesn't have the one and two line spacing selection like a normal Corona 4 would have. It has half line spacing. And so we can see here in this mathematical expression, the division line of this fraction is on the same printing line as the main printing line right here. And then he goes a half a line above to type the three and a half a line below to type the three of that fraction. And then he does the same thing over here with this, this fraction as well. He goes a half line above and below to type that symbol, which is really interesting. And it gives him the ability to do these things. Like if you go up here at the top of the page, for instance, he's going a half line above the regular line to type the one space plus space two then does underscores and then goes a half line below this line to type the three. And very interesting how he did that. And I think it was crucial uh, to the success of this book that this typewriter is able to do that. So as we move down here, this expression, BC parentheses to the A power, the typewriter is being moved up half a line to type the A expression there. So I wanted to point out the difference between the minus sign and the underscore in the way Brian uh, created this, these expressions. So you can see the minus sign right here, this here and this here. Uh, those are standard uh, minus signs on the keyboard. But then the top of the square root symbol appears to me that he moved the printing position up a half a line and typed underscores instead because each of the sections of this underscore appear to be wider than the standard minus sign itself. And also you can see right here the division line on this improper fraction. He moved the typing line up a half a line, typed the one space plus space two, and then backspaced and typed the underscores below it. And then he went down a half a line below the main printing line to type the three. So I think that's how he was doing it. I'm also interested in how people format their documents to make them very readable. And I like the way what Brian did with this document. So he has these major headers within different sections that he underscores. And then the first paragraph below the header is immediately on the line below it and it's not indented like you can see here. And then subsequent paragraphs within this same section are indented like here, here, and here for instance. That really creates to me a really clear and concise way of formatting the document. And this is something that as typewriter aficionados we really need to think about is how the formatting of our document looks and reads and how le legible it is. I should also mention that there are a number of worksheets in this book that makes it very useful for not only new students to algebra, but as refresher for us older students. And this is a typical example, worksheet 2-2, finding linear equation. So he centers the uppercase uh, title of this particular worksheet, and then there's a space below it, and then an unindented paragraph describing the problem, and then he gives the each pro example problem with sufficient room here for the person to work out the problem with and write it in pencil. I really like the layout of this. This is classically easy to understand and easy to read. And it does definitely bring me back to my early days in school when a lot of uh, material that weren't in published manuals were uh, typewritten by the teachers. 
And again, here are some examples where being a half-line machine makes it much easier to type these fractions. So the main typing line is the y equals and plus 5. And then the minus sign for this minus negative fraction is the hyphen or the minus sign. And then he moves a half line up to type the 5 and then he underscores the 5 because the dividing line of the fraction is a little wider than the minus sign. So again, that's an underscore of the half line above it. And then he goes a half line below the main line to type the 6. So that's how those expressions are made and they work quite well. And of course, as you can tell, he does a really great job of maintaining the proper spacing between the phrases. Having a space between the Y and the equals and the expressions makes it much more legible. Well, this book was created using a 1930 Corona 4, but the word problems are definitely modern in the 21st century. Brandon's phone plan charges five cents per text and one cent per minute, etc. I think that's very humorous. Well, you may have noticed on many older times typewriters that around the card guide area there's either a notch or a hole or something where you can nestle a pen or a pencil in and those are used to do vertical lines like this or horizontal lines like that and Brian has taken use of these particular features in part of his workbook where here he has drawn some boxes or cells uh, for these quadratic equations, and the horizontal lines appear to be the underscore symbols, but the vertical signs look like they were drawn with a pen using the card guide hole or notch and rotating the plat. And in fact, down here on this expression, you might be able to tell there's a slight right hand hook to this one, and there's a little round blob of ink where you can imagine a ballpoint or maybe a gel pen. Uh, was used and went down like that and made a little blob. So this is certainly a valid way of using the typewriter for mathematical expressions as you can use those line drawing features built into the notches or holes in your card guide. So here's the quadratic formula as Brian has typed it out here and I wanted to go through and look at how many vertical lines were actually used in creating this expression. We'll start with the middle line with the x and the equals is there's a middle line and then half a line above it is the negative b and plus or minus and then another half line above that is the underscore for the line above it that serves as the top of the square root symbol. And then if you go back down to the main line here where the x equals is, then you go another half line below it and you get the 2a. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4 half lines, which would be two whole lines used to make this expression. I wanted to point out that one of the common symbols on American typewriters that is lacking from Brian's Corona 4 is the one half and one quarter fraction symbol, but Brian is able to recreate that using the superscript numbers. So he has superscripts one through five. So here he typed a superscript on the main line which is the one, the numerator of the fraction. And then he backspaced and did a hyphen or a minus sign as the dividing sign. And then he went a half space below and typed a superscript of two to create the denominator of one half. So very interesting, the flexibility that you can use with these machines to have features that would otherwise be lacking. I like what Brian says in his preface here. Math and nearly everything else when I was in school came from my teacher's typewritten pages duplicated in purple on a ditto machine. Do you guys remember ditto machines? I do. I can still smell the chemical of the ditto machine. It would have been unthinkable then for someone to make a book of typewritten worksheets because they were so ordinary and common. But now that we are again fascinated with typewriters, I hope you get as much out of these type pages as I did back in the day for both the content and the evidence of my literal personal touch. That is so true. As I said earlier, the use of typewriters to make worksheets was very common back in the early 1970s and earlier, and having worksheets duplicated using ditto machines was very common back then. 
So I tried to reproduce one of the expressions in Brian's book using this corona standard that does not have any mathematical symbols. The expression was the square root of 7x plus 4 fifths. So first of all, I don't have a square root symbol, so I typed a lowercase v, then I backspaced and typed a slash, and then I moved up a full line and typed an underscore. Actually, the underscore and the slash look pretty good as far as a square root symbol, but the lowercase v doesn't really line up perfectly with the slash, so it's kind of crude looking. And then, of course, the 7x is fine, but there's no plus symbol on this typewriter, so I had to type a colon, and then on top of it I typed a dash. And it's hard to tell if it's a plus or if it's a small division symbol. And then, of course, um, I don't have a half line feature on this typewriter, so I had to type the four fifths done this way instead of with the dividing line horizontal. So it's sort of doable, but it's not very clear, and there's a lot of ambiguity in this. It's not as precise for mathematical use as symbols dedicated for math. Well, for me, this book works on several levels. First of all, it's been a few decades since I've been out of school, and his workbook serves as a really concise summary and refresher of basic algebra skills, and I really appreciate that. And also, if you're a parent of a middle school or early high school student, you might want to consider getting this book so you, as a parent, can help your kid with the homework. Anyways, I think it's a great refresher for algebra, but on the typewriter, level, it's a great example of how you can use a typewriter, even an old pre-World War II typewriter, to do camera-ready art for publication. And it has that very unique typewritten appearance yet is very legible. I really like the way Brian created the mathematical expressions with the typewriter, and they're very legible. There's no ambiguity. He did a great job. And again, I would uh, ask you guys to consider supporting Brian's project here. Pick up this book. I'll leave a link down below. And as always, stay creative with your typewriters, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.